It was cold and windy outside on that Iowa farm early in the morning of March, and Binky pulled his blankets over his face to try to turn over and get a little sleep because there was noise. What was the noise? He thought it sounded like their neighbor, Red Hog Smith. What was Red Hog Smith doing here? It must be a dream. <coughs> and he pulled the blanket again, trying to get that smell. What was the smell? And then he heard a louder noise, fire, fire. And Red Hog Smith pulled the covers back and Vicky looked up and there was the big burly bearded man. And he grabbed Tommy, Vicky's little seven-year-old brother, and he grabbed Vicky, who was nine, and walked over to the window, crashed the glass out, and threw him out the window. No danger because there was snow still on the march ground. And they hit down on that soft snow with all their blankets and quilts and comforters underneath them. And as they laid there on the ground, they looked around. Oh, there's mother nearby, and she ran over, threw her arms around him. Oh, Vicky, oh, Tommy. I'm so glad you're saved. They looked up at the window and there was their neighbor, Mr. Smith, throwing things out the window. There was a trunk. There was a few clothes. There was a piece of furniture. It landed out in the snow. It fortunately did not break. They watched. In a few minutes, Red Hog Smith came out the main door and he gathered them. And Mother said, oh, I must go in. And she said, no, no, it's too late now. And as they stood and watched, the fire began to envelop and take over the whole house. And after a few more minutes, the house crashed down. What were they going to do? Thank goodness that their older brother, John, was still in Marshalltown. He had not come home that night. He would be safe. Mr. Smith said, come on over. I've got my team and my sled. I'm just coming back from a school board meeting. Get in the wagon with me or get in the sled with me and we'll go to my house and you can spend the night there and we'll figure out what to do in the morning. So they went over got in Mr. Smith's sled, drove a few miles to his homestead, and there they spent the night. They woke up the next morning, and they said, oh, thank goodness that he was coming by, but what are we going to do for our house? So they went back over to the house, and they began to look around, and there it was, hardly anything left, just the basement, the way grand, their father and Uncle Dirk had built it many years ago. Just at that time, John came up on a wagon, and there was John. Oh, John, you're so, so glad you're back home from Marshalltown. What are we going to do? We've got the house burned down, but thank goodness, Mother, that you're all okay. If Father was still here, if Father was still alive, and Uncle Dirk, if he was still alive, Father and Uncle Dirk had gone off to the Civil War, and unfortunately, they did not make it back, at least not alive. They had died fighting in the Civil War. They had built this house years ago, beautiful roof, beautiful porch, and they even planted a lovely yellow rose vine that had grown up, and lo and behold, the rose vine seemed to have survived the fire. Somehow it was still sitting there by the porch. Well, John began to clean out and work around the house, and wouldn't you know it, just as they were beginning to clean up and get some of the boards pushed out of the way, here comes Mr. Hank Collins. Mr. Hake Collins, who had the mortgage on the farm. Father and Uncle Dirk, when they built the house, had to borrow $500, and they borrowed it from Hake Collins. Every time they had a cow or a pig or extra chickens or some other produce from the farm, they would sell it, and all that money would go back to Hake Collins to pay off the mortgage. And here he was, and he began to walk around and look at everything that had happened. He said, oh, what am I going to do? There goes my collateral. There goes my collateral. What are you going to do to pay this mortgage? And mother looked at him. Mr. Smith looked at him and said, we're more important than that money. He said, well, I don't know. I've got to have some return on this. That mortgage is coming due in January, and here it is March. How are you going to raise $300 that you still owe on the mortgage? They began to wonder what they were going to do. Hey, Collins got in his buggy and drove off. John and Vicki and Tommy began to clean up around the house. Mother began to clean. And as they were cleaning and playing in the basement, they found something. Look at that. Mother, John, what is this? There was an unusual stone, kind of rough looking, about 14 inches long. Funny stone, not very pretty, but boy, was it heavy. Maybe it was valuable. They set it aside and played some more. 
And then a little later, they came in the house, and Mother said, it's time for supper, boys. We're going to eat here in the granary tonight. In fact, this whole granary, the granary was the building where they stored the grain from the corn and the oats and the wheat that they grew. And it had slatted boards with big spaces in between. And his mother and Tommy and John and Bicky sat around that little improvised supper table, boards on a couple of sawhorses. They were there eating. They said, yes, this will make a fine little house. We'll put some mud chinking in the walls to cover up those holes. I'll build a little lean-to outside, said John, so that we can have an extra room. Mother can have a room. We'll have a kitchen and a living room. And the boys can sleep over here in the corner. And so they had it all worked out. And this was going to be their supper. They were going to have cornmeal mush, every which way you could imagine. Cornmeal mush and cold milk in the morning. And in the evening, cold milk and cornmeal mush. Sliced, fried, baked, cooked. Boy, they were getting tired of it just thinking about it. What was going to happen? How were they going to pay that $300 to Hake Collins? Maybe the next time John went to Marshalltown, they could come up with an idea. Mother said, yes, I'll go with you next time you go, and maybe we can bring back some whitewash for that big stone, and we'll use it inside the house to prop a door, and I'll go talk to Mr. Collins. Surely he won't be so mean as to make us get off the farm, make us homeless. They began to talk those things over, and they had pleasant memories of Marshalltown, and they wondered what would happen the next time they went. Maybe when Mother went to talk to Mr. Collins, he would have mercy. Would he have mercy? Or would he say, if you don't pay, you and your boys are going to have to leave the farm and go live wherever you can. Come back again for the next part of the story and learn about Uncle Dirk's special secret.